three, two, one. Hello, Facebook world, and welcome to a special edition coronavirus update for pets. Today, we have with us Dr. Sarah Caddy, who is a virologist from Cambridge University in the United Kingdom, currently taking the time coming out of the lab. I know she's working due diligently right now with a whole bunch of other scientists. I know pet parents all around the world, Dr. Caddy, are, are pretty excited for this, and there's so many questions, and the media frenzy that's currently going on with headlines from different media outlets from different parts of the country. Don't touch your dog, touch your dog, stay away from your cat, don't go near your cat. It is a whirlwind of information and I realize things are constantly changing, but I'm just going to cut right to the chase and ask you, can our pets get coronavirus? I mean, very simply at the moment, we don't have all the details. Um, I think it's going to be reasonably unlikely um, and even if it's theoretically possible, the question is, well, is it is it relevant? Is it important to the animals or is it important to us? Um, and there's basically no evidence that it causes any disease in our pets, which is which is good news. That's really reassuring. Um, and in terms of spread the animals spreading disease or the infection to us, again, there's no evidence that can happen either. Of course. What we're seeing today in the headlines is we know that the first dog who was contaminated at Hong Kong, that really made a lot of press. And, you know, we were seeing, hey, look, this was a weak case. There's still no evidence. There's no problems. Now, as of recently, we have the second dog. And we were hearing from virologists on the other side of the world who were saying, hey, this is now on the surface of animals. So where this may have not been a problem originally, you know, with healthy pets, if you have somebody at home currently um, with the disease or as a carrier, this could be a potentially a huge problem. I know there's places right now, headlines saying, hey, don't kiss your dog. Other headlines in the media said, go ahead and love your dog. This is really important. What is your take on all of this? Again, it's it's not a straightforward answer. I think it will depend partly on the, the the owner and the potential vulnerabilities of the owner. I think I think a, probably a, a good analogy um, for the dog is to think of your dog as as kind of a towel in terms of whether it can carry a virus. And we're not we're not worried about towels necessarily, but we would be careful to to wash our hands after touching another a towel for example someone else has has touched um so kissing your dog i mean there's lots of reasons uh, lots of other infections potentially vulnerable people could get from kissing their dog but i think we really need to be aware of all the the great positive mental effects you can have from spending time with your dogs and patting your dogs and hugging your dogs and i think those are really important right now. My my question is actually pertains to Rodney's situation where he's an immunologically healthy individual. He's got immunologically healthy dogs. There've been minimal to no exposure, but he goes to a dog park twice a day for several hours where he, his dogs and himself, they, he meets a variety of other animals and the dogs all say hi and play and all the people say hi. Probably at this point, Rodney, there's not a six foot distance between the people saying hi. But then Rodney comes home and his dogs go upstairs where there's a 95 year old, beautiful Lebanese grandma who doesn't leave the house. Um, even before Corona outbreak, she just is an, an elderly woman who's healthy, but 95. Could How nervous are you about that scenario where dogs could be, I don't want to say vectors, but they could be potentially carrying infectious environmental contaminants from place to place? Is that is that even a potential or am I really thinking too deep on that one? So, again, if we use the analogy of the towel, um, it is possible that dogs, you know, could pick up the virus if they're sneezed upon or coughed upon um, and very close contact between dogs could you know theoretically transmit little tiny particles of virus to another animal now at the moment we we have no idea really how long the virus particles can survive on dogs fur um, a study came out a couple of days ago in the New England Journal of Medicine that compared the survival of virus on a few different substances, um, but the substances they chose were copper, 
plastic, um, stainless steel and cardboard, and none of which is anything like dog's fur. Um, but of those four, I would say probably cardboard is most similar to a dog's fur. And the virus survived less than 24 hours. Um, so it was, it's it's very brief in that respect. But that's that's a different situation from your dog coming into the house and going straight up to see an elderly relative. I think if it's possible to um, to avoid that happening, you know, even for an hour or two, that that's going to reduce the risk. Um, but as I said, we don't know how long the virus could survive in this very hypothetical situation. Um, and I think just make sure that if you're relatives are patting the dog then they wash their hands after using soap and water as advised and that will kill any virus that they happen to come into contact with by patting the dogs so my first burning question in that response is hand sanitizers better than nothing but not as good as soap and water hand sanitizers um you know are, are they adequate not really what, what's your take on sanitizers so i think they definitely have their their, their benefits i think they're definitely useful um i mean the virus, coronavirus, has an envelope, um, which is something that is quite easily broken just by, you know, by hand sanitizers, by soap, um, and so that's that's a kind of a good thing in terms of control. Um, as soon as the envelope's broken, then the virus isn't infectious anymore. Um, so, whereas soap and water is going to help physically you know, get the the virus off your hands, hopefully the hand sanitizer will just break the envelope and stop it being infectious. So, um, certainly, uh, in the absence of nothing, hand sanitizer is great. It's it's very quick. It's very portable. So, I think using using that if you're out and about and worried is, is a great idea. And what about uh, any protection for dogs or cats? This is a common question. Should, should people be bathing their animals every day? Should they be using some type of topical misting agent? There's a lot of people doing weird hmm. things to their pets right now to try and disinfect them. Interesting. Bath. Okay. Um, so but, you know, giving your dog a bath would um, have a similar effect to washing your hands. But of course, um, there are some dogs that we practice for and some dogs that they won't um you know i myself have a 25 kilo collie cross and he he would not be happy with being bathed every day um so instead i'm going to make sure that i wash my hands very carefully after after i pat him if he's been in contact with other dogs um i don't have any knowledge of of, of special um you know, demisters or or things like that specifically for dogs but um i think again practicing sensible hygiene around your dogs and and giving a bath potentially it's, well if they're definitely in contact with someone with the virus or have been coughed on by someone with a the virus then a bath is a sensible thing if that's possible for your animal we're getting mixed signals from different parts of the world when it comes to having a family member or somebody that's actually infected with COVID-19. Uh, there, you know, you have some reports that say the animal must be quarantined. I know in, in on the other side of the world, in parts of Asia right now, there's 11 dogs and cats that have been quarantined immediately because, of course, they say they're finding um, these these traces of COVID on their fur. Do you think? In this type of situation, what would be your recommendation for, let's say, you know, God forbid I myself get corona um, and I have my pet who's with me every single day, what would you advise me to do? What should people who are listening to this, if they do in fact get infected, uh, some of the precautions they should they should, should be taking with their pets? So at the moment, there's no evidence that you could... Uh make your dog ill from coronavirus by you know, bypassing it on if as i said it's still a big if whether dogs can actually be infected by the virus and even if we do go past all the big ifs and say yes they they can um the you know, the chance of you causing your dog to be ill is is extremely slim at the moment so i would say from that point of view please don't worry um in terms of whether you quarantine with your animal to prevent your animal from spreading to other people, then I guess that very much depends on individual situations. I mean, again, speaking from personal experience, I know that if I get really sick and I'm quarantined, I want my dog, you know, around with me, um, and I wouldn't um, be letting him 
go and meet lots of other random people or, or uh, other dogs um, for that quarantine period, just because he may be carrying tiny virus virus particles on his coat um, and it's sensible to keep that distance you know for that really vulnerable period where you know that you know you're personally shedding virus and do you think that this is just a sort of a a country by country situation like where you're in the united kingdom you know some of the headlines that you open up like in the washington post and the new york post were laying on what's happening like in hong kong and in china and situations like that these animals are being quarantined in like facilities they're not actually even being quarantined at home so are, do, do we do we see this coming to north america like do you think there will be there will be a potential where animals will have to be removed and put in facilities or this is just a country by country thing currently as far as I can tell at the moment, this is a country by country approach. Um, I think facilities for quarantining dogs are, are, are quite limited in my um, experience and certainly my knowledge in the UK. I just don't think it would be firstly logistically feasible. And, you know, as I said before, with this really strong human human animal bond, many owners are, are going to be extremely reluctant to be separated from their pets, which I completely understand. Um I think, uh, again, um, thinking back to other scenarios, well, we know that children are extremely infectious, much, much more infectious than, than dogs, um, but there's absolutely no suggestion of, of quarantining children. So I think it's, it seems an extreme example, but um, uh, bearing that in mind, I don't think that um, in, you know, certain in the UK and in the US, that would be a route that we're going down separating dogs from owners. And one question just about the general barometer of people's fears versus lack of fears in some situations. What is your perception, Dr. Caddy, of the world's response? It, it feels a little divided to me, like there's a segment of pet parents saying everyone is overreacting for crying out loud. And then there's a segment of pet parents that um, in fact, there's been reports about people, you know, dumping their dogs and cats off at animal shelters, which is devastating for our community. Mm -hmm. when, when you're watching people's responses, what are your thoughts? I mean, this certainly is a really serious and very unique situation. Obviously, we've never seen anything like this before. I think as a, a pet owner, um, I think there's absolutely no reason to be to be giving your pet up at this point. You know, first and foremost, um, for mental health reasons, they're going to be people you want or animals you want to have by your side right now. Um, uh, you know, they're no more likely to spread the virus than something uh, that isn't cleaned properly in your house. Quite honestly, um, and so I don't see any reason that people should be panicking and, and getting rid of their animals um, at this point. In this, uh, and I can't see that changing any time in the future. Um, you know, as I said before, um, there is no evidence that the animals can give you the virus, which is, I imagine, the main reason that, that people would be abandoning their pets. Um, and there's no evidence that you can make your pet ill either. So Dr. Kenny, talk a little bit about cats because it's certainly in the media, it seems to be very dog centric and dogs have been tested. And maybe that's because dogs are out and about more than kitties that are prim primarily live their lives inside. But are is there the potential that kitties could host the virus or there's not been much research or where, where are kitties in the, in the research area? So that's a really good question. As far as I know, there's been no research and no reports in cats at all. Um, but if we sort of apply the same principles to cats, then obviously they are furry creatures that may well um, be able to carry the small virus particles on their fur for very short periods of time. Again, if you cough on them and you know that, that you're infected. Um, whether cats themselves can get infected, we have no I no idea at all. Um, again, I was I'm going to say that it's unlikely, um, and certainly there's no evidence that it can cause disease in the animals, and even less evidence it's ever going to transmit back to us. But at the moment, it just like, like you say, it doesn't seem to have featured in the media interest to the same degree. And you're absolutely right that cats don't mix with other cats to anywhere near the same extent. Um, and in some ways, it's it's going to be easier to keep um, some cats indoors. Obviously, every cat's individual as well. 
Dr. Caddy, do you see for industry professionals right now, one of those big underlying questions for trainers, for doggy daycares, for groomers, people who are seeing um, more than normal, especially now, you know, I, I was reading online that, the, you know, you're seeing some of these facilities with like almost 75 to 100 dogs in them. Groomers are seeing, you know, dozens and dozens of animals coming in with the potential of the virus, let's say, being at its lowest or potentially, you know, that risk of that transfer being extremely low, do you see there being a, a higher chance or, and would you have recommendations to those professionals that are seeing these sort of mass loads of dogs coming in through their door every single day? Um, so I would recommend that if you have an owner with a dog and the owner is self-isolating with you know, s symptoms of coronavirus or confirmed coronavirus infection, I would advise that dog isn't getting groomed for that two-week isolation period or that dog isn't getting trained. I think it's sensible to keep that dog away if possible. Um, in terms of dogs with owners with no symptoms and no other contact issues, then I think the same rules apply as general hygiene. So um, obviously, if you're grooming that dog, well, then make sure that um, you carefully wash your hands afterwards. You know, Don't touch your face if possible and, and certainly don't eat anything before you've washed your hands. Um, so it's just sensible standard hygiene precautions should be enough in that situation. Um, but yeah, as of yet, we we don't have any really clear understanding or evidence either way, I'm afraid. So, so Dr. Kenny, what are your, because we don't know about the porosity of fur and skin and hair and how hospitable or not hospitable an animal's body would be to hosting that virus. What about other services around the home, like food and water bowls, um, is that is there any other than daily disinfecting? Any reason to be more concerned about sharing water bowls or food bowls, or not really? So I think it's it's a really good plan to to get yeah, to be perhaps more routinely cleaning your your pets' uh, food and water bowls. Um, again, I think the virus to survive, a human is going to have to have coughed or or being extremely close to those um particular items um but it makes sense to just sort of step up the general hygiene levels in your home regardless i think that's probably a a good plan at this stage i know the university of, of pennsylvania the vet med school over there was saying that people should be stocking up on pet food or um, having a lot of medication around because if for some reason they're hauled off to the hospital from their home and their pets are home by themselves, there could be a whole bunch of potential issues there. I know I was reading horrible articles in, in Asia where, you know, poor pet owners were pulled out of their homes being, and being quarantined in places and had no way to get back to their pets. And they sort of, they were trapped at home. Are these thoughts, do these go through your head? And like, do you think you would have any advice for pet parents on how to prepare or how you're preparing at home if, God forbid, you're off to the hospital? No, I think these are definitely things to think about ahead of time. I think, you know, we, we have warnings now that this, this virus, you know, it is going to escalate in the US and the UK. So now is the time to think about this carefully. You think about if you're ill, if your partner's ill, your family's ill, you know, where will your animal go? I think it's really important to drop sort of provisional plans um, in that situation. Um, I guess a lot of us are hoping that the virus isn't, isn't going to be that severe for us personally and that we won't require hospitalisation and that our dogs, in fact, um, our pets will be able to stay at home with us and we'll be able to care for them. Um, certainly in the UK, um, all vets are trying to stay open. There's some staffing issues, of course, but all vets are still offering 24-7 care. Um, and I know uh, there's many, many people out there who would be willing to, to volunteer to look after your pets if you were to be hospitalised for whatever reason. So it's a really good plan to sort of get, get that support network uh, lined up ahead of time just in case um, the worst happens. So you know, figure out who you would like to be looking after animal. Um, in terms of stockpiling veterinary medications, I, I think um, it's best not to do that if at all possible. So we keep the supply chains going for, the, for all the animals that do need it. Um, Again, it's, at the moment, there's no evidence that um, there's going to be a, su a sudden lack of medications. And as I said, most vet practices are, are 
are doing their absolute utmost to uh, to stay open and to be able to offer care you know, no matter what time of day or night. Okay, so first and foremost, nobody should be afraid of their pets. And especially if you're sort of in a healthy situation, you don't need to take your, you know, uh, there's those rare cases of people, and I'm not sure how much of they would even be qualified as people, in, in my opinion, that would be leaving their pets out in the streets. I don't even, I, as far, in my brain, those are a rarity and maybe, you know, I, hopefully karma comes back to those people, but to the, to the general pet loving public, you shouldn't have any fears with your pet, especially if you're healthy. You can, it's okay to kiss your dog and hug your dog, um, take your dog out for regular walks and so on and so forth. If you are infected, then of course, practicing hygiene. There's no need to like send your pet off like somewhere else and to stay away from you for, for that duration of time, but to also be cautious. Just as you would not abandon your children during this time, uh, there, there is absolutely no reason to be thinking about your dogs or pets of any type being um, infected or infectious or the thought of rehoming your animal is totally not only unnecessary, it's really kind of out of, it's it's outlandish to be thinking about animals as being vectors or infectious models enough that we would ever consider getting rid of our pets. I think that that's people's biggest concern right now is what if discussion around coronavirus and pets leads to animal shelters being overrun with beautiful, well-loved animals with super panicked owners? No, I think... The message I want to get across is that, yeah, there is absolutely no evidence that your animal can make you ill from coronavirus. And there's no evidence that you can make your animal physically ill from coronavirus. So please don't worry um, about this side of this pandemic. Um, I think our pets are going to be so valuable to us moving forwards and supporting us through, you know, some quite significant social distancing and isolation. And actually what I've been seeing on social media is that more people are actually adopting animals or, or getting animals over the next couple of weeks, couple of months. And I think that's great. I think that's actually a really positive thing to do. Um, and I hope that those animals are going to enjoy the next few months with their with their new owners being you know close at hand every day. Really good advice. And I agree with that. If you are at home and bored or, or in and maybe don't want to permanently adopt an animal, you can certainly use your uh, self-isolation time for foster care. You could foster an animal at a shelter that, uh, that needs a home for a few weeks or months, and that's a beautiful option. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking time out of your incredibly busy schedule to share your knowledge with us. Oh, you're very welcome. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Dr. Sarah Caddy, thank you so much again. Everybody else who's watching in Facebook world, I hope that these two incredible veterinarians put sort of those those fears at bay for you. And of course, if there's any updates, Dr. Sarah Caddy, if we could have you again on the show, that would be incredible. To everyone who's watching, thank you so much, and we'll see you again.